San Francisco-based First Republic Bank is on the verge of collapse. It could even be seized by the feds this weekend. The bank's stock plunging today, sinking to $3.51 a share, and that's a 95% drop from earlier this year. Its market cap now just over a billion dollars. The death blow coming this week after the lender reported a worse than expected drop in customer deposits. The troubles first started with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, if you recall, and then continued with customers taking their money out of mid-size and smaller banks. Well, that panic then forced banks to quickly liquidate assets, triggering huge losses. So the concern now is that First Republic Bank could be a bellwether for hundreds of similar banks. Our Max Darrow has been talking with First Republic customers at the branch in Burlingame about their bank on the brink. Today, First Republic Bank customers prepared for the worst as the bank teeters on the verge of collapse. This was not a trip to the bank Mario Molina was eager to take, but one he and his family deemed to be necessary. We're going to withdraw some money you know, and move it to Wells Fargo. Molina is preparing for the possibility that the bank is going to go under and into FDIC receivership. The stock price has gone through the basement. During last month's banking crisis, which saw the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, First Republic customers pulled more than $100 billion in deposits out of the bank. According to company figures, First Republic had nearly $233 billion in assets under management as of March 31st. Well, the word is they might close down next week. The basic problems that these banks have been facing are generally the same for all banks. Dr. Julian Vogel is an assistant professor of finance at San Jose State University. A receivership is basically um, the FDIC coming in and handling all the affairs of a failed bank. It's selling the assets of the bank to then um, meet the obligations of the bank, such as, for example, the people that have $250,000 or less deposited. Vogel says when the Fed raised interest rates, the value of some of First Republic's assets went down, so the bank was faced with less money on its balance sheet. That led to people panicking because of what they saw happen with SVB and ultimately the mass withdrawal of funds. When more people withdraw their money, that's when more banks, or when the bank is more likely to go under. However, these banks that are affected also had an issue with their management. They didn't diversify enough. They invested an unproportionately large amount of their assets in uh, risk-free treasury securities. And that is never ideal. Big picture, he says it's not easy to forecast how everything will unfold. It's hard to say, but I don't think at this moment that we're in repeat for 2008. Molina, however, is concerned that more banks will see a similar fate. It's sad, but it is what it is. According to company figures, First Republic is ranked among the top 25 banks in America by asset size. It comes on the same day the Federal Reserve released a much anticipated report where it took some of the blame for Silicon Valley's collapse. So the report says SVB failed because of extremely bad bank management by the lender's executives, but also because of weakened regulations and relaxed government supervision. The report calls out workplace practices at the Fed. It says supervisors were unwilling to crack down on bank management even when they saw growing problems.